Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, Guinness record for most elections contested and lost. And this is the CRTC's case to the Supreme Court of Canada on why debates don't need all candidates from my blog. Memorandum of Argument of the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission. The bad guys. Part 1. Statement of Facts. The applicant, John Turmel, has sought leave to appeal the order of the Federal Court of Appeal, dated July 22, 2009, dismissing the applicant's leave to appeal broadcasting decision, CRTC 2009-184, dated April 8, 2009, the CRTC decision. The CRTC decision <clears throat> had dismissed the applicant's complaint relating to an election debate program hosted by Rogers Cable Communications, Inc., Rogers, during the 2007 Ontario provincial election. A history of the applicant's complaint. Ew, too. Applicant was a candidate in the 2007 Ontario general election. On 18 September, he participated in a debate program hosted by Rogers on his community channel, Rogers TV, for six candidates in that riding of Brant. At some point during or shortly after the applicant made his opening statement, I've already explained it was during, he was removed from the set and did not participate further in the debate. The exhibits E, G, H of applicant's uh, affidavit. And I said it was during my opening statement for sure. I've already corrected this. So raising the other false possibility once again is lying. On 24 September, the applicant filed a complaint with the commission alleging his removal from the debate amounted to denying him an equitable share of a free-time partisan political broadcast, as he asserted was required by the commission's regulations, and requesting that the commission take action. On uh, October the 4th, the applicant brought an application for judicial review against the commission. The applicant's request for interlocutory relief was dismissed. On November the 5th, the application for judicial review was dismissed by the Federal Court of Appeal on the 17th of December on the grounds that the commission had not rendered a decision in relation to the applicant's complaint, which could be the subject of a judicial review or against which relief could be sought. On January 26th, applicant requested that the commission render a decision with respect to his complaint. On April 8th, the commission issued the CRTC decision dismissing the applicant's complaint. B. Broadcasting decision, CRTC 2009-184. 6. In the CRTC decision, the commission noted that it considered the applicant's request that the commission compel Rogers to provide him with an equitable share in the election debate program was now moot given that the election had already taken place. 7. The Commission considered that the remaining issue raised by the applicant's complaint was whether Rogers had breached the Commission's regulations regarding the equitable allocation of time for programs of a partisan political character during an election period. The Commission noted that the provision that applied to Rogers in this case was subsection 27.4 of the Broadcasting Regulation. 8. The Commission noted that in Public Notice 1995-44, it stated that, pursuant to the Ontario Court of Appeals decision in R versus CBC, the Commission's regulations regarding the equitable allocation of time did not apply to election debate programs, because they are not considered of a partisan political character. So, the Commission further noted that it had reiterated this statement in Broadcasting Circular 2007-5, issued in connection with the 2007 Ontario Provincial Election. And I said they were just reminding the media the Vezina decision lets them exclude anyone they wish if they call it a debate. The Commission considered that in light of its determination in Public Notice 1995-44, it was within Rogers' editorial discretion to exclude participants from an election debate. program who were not complying with the rules and format Rogers had set out for the program. Well, that it was within Rogers' editorial discretion to exclude participants from an election debate program, that's the problem. Notice how they throw in the superfluous qualifier of those who violate the rules. When I agree, they were bad rules, and I didn't have to obey them. Then they refer to the Vezina decision, giving them the right to exclude me anyway. 10. As a result of these considerations, the Commission determined that Rogers did not breach subsection 27.4 and accordingly dismissed the applicant's complaint. 11. The applicant applied for leave to appeal the CRTC decision to the Federal Court of Appeal and <clears throat> leave to appeal was denied by the Federal Court of Appeal. Justices Nano, Evans, and Peltier, no reasons were given. 
13. The applicant is now applying this court for leave to appeal the Federal Court of Appeals order pursuant to Section 40 of the Supreme Court Act. C. Regulatory Framework. Paragraph 10.1 of the Broadcasting Act empowers the Commission to make regulations respecting the proportion of time that may be devoted to the broadcasting of programs, including advertisements or announcements, of a partisan political character and assignment of such time on an equitable basis to all parties and rival candidates. And I said, and if the regulations they have promulgated result in candidates being excluded from debates, well, they need new ones. March 15th, the Commission issued public notice CRTC 1995-44, which revised its policy set out in public notice CRTC 1988-142, entitled A Policy with Respect to Election Campaign Broadcasting. The Commission noted that the Ontario Court of Appeal had ruled in R versus CBC that debates were not programs of a partisan political character. Duh! and therefore were not covered by the Commission's regulations regarding the equitable allocation of time during an election period. In light of this decision, the Commission stated that it would no longer require that debate programs feature all rival parties or candidates in one or more debates. Imagine that. And I said, that's the big issue, that the Commission no longer requires that debate programs feature all rival parties and candidates. It's official in Canada. Questions and issue. 17. The Commission's submissions will address the following issue. Whether this application raises any issues of public importance that warrant granting leave to appeal. So argument, CRTC, that the applicant had not raised any issues of public importance that merit a decision of this court. So, while there is no doubt that this court has the jurisdiction to hear appeals from decisions of the Federal Court of Appeal denying leave to appeal, this jurisdiction is to be exercised sparingly. So, why do they always point out that the remedies I seek are rarely granted? Is that a reason not to, because it's rare? 20. The applicant argues that Rogers did not have sufficient justification to remove him from the election debate program. Well, let's presume an example where I should have been ejected. Say I was continuing to speak past my time, interrupting people when it wasn't my time. Unfair interference. Sure, remove me. But that wasn't what happened. This argument is premised on the notion that Rogers could not exercise its editorial discretion in an election debate program because the applicant was entitled to an equitable share of the time in the debate program pursuant to subsection 27.4. However, as noted above, Pursuant to the Ontario Court of Appeals decision in R versus CBC, subsection 27.4 does not apply to election debate programs because they are not considered programs of a partisan political character. Someday in a hundred years, they'll be reading these pleadings to be the to, to the highest court in the land, and they're going to be laughing too. 21. C R versus CBC, the Ontario Court of Appeal established clearly that election debates do not constitute programs of a partisan political character within the meaning of the Commission's regulations, since they present a number of different political viewpoints. But not all, a number. So, uh, the court stated that while statements made by each of the participants are undoubtedly partisan, the program itself clearly is not. Well, one viewpoint wrong, a number but not all okay. It's not clear at all why a debate with one out of five candidates is partisan, but two out of five is not. I can understand the rationale for five out of five being impartially partisan or having an equal partisan effect. But to say a debate of partisan political impact is not partisan is silly. But that's at stake in this case. Not very important. 22. Beyond simply stating that the decision is contradictory, the applicant has not raised any reason to doubt the decision in R versus CBC or the Commission's reliance on that decision. Well, exclusion is democratic, isn't contradictory. Leave to appeal this decision to the Supreme Court of Canada was denied. So Vezina couldn't convince three Supremes of the importance of media exclusion of candidates because debates aren't partisan. 23. The applicant further argues that despite R versus CBC, the Commission has a duty to make regulations that would ensure all time in election debate programs are shared equitably among all candidates. Right! It's their duty to ensure that access to free time on the public airwaves be fair. 
This argument ignores the fact that the Commission's authority to make regulations under Section 10 of the Broadcasting Act is permissive, not mandatory. So, they don't have a mandatory authority to make electoral treatment democratic. They have a permissive authority, whatever that means. They didn't explain. What's permissive authority to do their duty? Authority, but they don't have to if they don't want to. 24. For the foregoing reasons, the Commission submits that this application raises no questions of law of public importance. And I said, well, the essence of democracy is not of public importance. For the last time that the Commission no longer requires that debate programs feature all rival parties and candidates is a profound change of national import. Uh, the Commission is not seeking costs. Good for them. They couldn't collect anyway. 